sem concessões. Jornal Nacional. Começa agora. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's not easy for us, we Brazilian, uh, watch this again in the table we are occupying with Mara, Deborah, my wife Natasha. It's very hard for us. Well, let's talk about, about voices. I'll be brief. And I have to read because I don't trust my English. About 40 years ago, I was a communication student, an under, undergraduate student, whose voice was, I uh, mean, deep. <laughs> and some friends asked me to uh, narrate a radio program they were producing for their course in the university. It was a program uh, on uh, the art of uh, Boy George and the Culture Club, the, the band. <laughs> the radio, the university radio, was in the same building of the course. So when I was narrating that program, the director of the radio uh, passed by. He walked through. He, what's the term for that, my God? He walked by, yeah. <laughs> He could listen to my voice, and, and he waited for uh, an interval. And, and then he asked me if I wanted to make what he called a registration voice, a voice registration for the radio station. And, well, what happened in 1984? My voice, that voice, changed my career, my plans, my life. At that moment, my voice pulled me out from an advertising agency and took me to a real radio station. And after that, to a television station. And one, one year later, to another television station, Global, where I am until today. Um, in 1986, this second TV network, Globo, wanted me to be more than a newscaster. They wanted me to be some, to, to do part of the, the process. They wanted me to participate of the, the production of the news program itself. And this made me an editor. Well, thereafter, my voice, as you can see, drove me to journalism as an editor. 38 years later, 38 years after that radio program for the university, my voice has a different purpose, as you can see. Because my voice today, in my country, is a symbol. My job is to lead the team of journalists that produces the most important journalistic product of my country. And my country is facing now a especially challenging moment for all journalists, not, not only for us, global, for all of us. Armies of robot soldiers attack us on social media. They, are, they have been spreading lies. They've been spreading fake news. They have conspired 
against civility, against basic institutions of democracy. Everybody knows that. Please allow me to cite an excerpt from a very, very accurate article by the psychologist Jonathan Haidt, published in the Atlantic magazine in April. He compares the malicious effects of social media on the United States in the last 10 years and compares that to the Tower of Babel story or history. It's the, the, the history that is registered in the Genesis, of course. He says, the story of Babel is the best metaphor I have found for what happened to America in the 2010s and for the fractured country we now inhabit. Something went terribly wrong very suddenly. We are disoriented, unable to speak the same language or recognize the same truth. We are cut off from one another and from the past. Well, when the psychologist mentions the power of the like button on Facebook or the power of the retweet button in Twitter, he brings us to Philadelphia because he says, it was just this kind of twitchy and explosive spread of anger that James Madison had tried to protect us from as he was drafting the U.S. Constitution. Well, and not only the U.S. faces this problem, as you know. It's almost like another kind of pandemic. At this point, in my country and in many others, a criminal noise echoes on social media to interdict the debate of ideas, to suffocate divergent opinions, to drown out journalists' voices. We are talking about, about voices here. My dear friend and partner, Deborah Feijó, who is present here tonight with her husband, Rodrigo, her daughter, Luisa, and with my wife, Natasha. Deborah Feijó was responsible for suggesting my name to the Voice Foundation for this kind and touching homage. Deborah is herself responsible for educating and enhancing my voice and the voices of many other journalists in Brazil, as well as here in the United States in Global TV offices in New York. I have my colleagues here. They prove that. Well, I've said uh, we are facing another kind of pandemic. Okay, and that reminds me of something that spread all over the world in the worst days and nights of the coronavirus dissemination. You will all remember when ordinary people at their home windows were applauding all health professionals, everybody. I think you all are going to will to agree with me. Because amid the challenges of this other pandemic I've mentioned, the world needs information, tolerance, sympathy, dialogue. The world needs arts, sensibility. The world needs to listen to all the voices. So here and now, to all of you who deliver scientific and technical knowledge to educate, to upgrade, to heal voices, my respect and my sincere applause. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Vladimir Chernov is recognized